Hello and welcome back with another video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study and focus on roots of drug administration. So what is root of drugs administration? The entry of drugs to the body is known as roots of drugs administration. We have main two roots for drugs administration, the enteral root and parenteral root. So what is enteral root? In this root, the drug is administered orally and absorbed in intestine in the form of syrup, capsule, tablets, etc. etc. In simple word, gastrointestinal tract are involved in this route. Second is parental route for drug administration in which the entry of drugs to the body in such a way in which gastrointestinal tract are not involved. The example of parental routes are inhalation, nasal, otic, ocular, topical or transdermal, rectal and vaginal routes for drugs administration. It also include intramuscular, subcutaneous, intravenous and intradermal route for drugs administration. Oral route. In this route, we have two methods for drugs administration. Either drug is applying topically without in gulf or the drug is placed in the mouth and swallowed for absorption through gastrointestinal tract into systemic circulation. Remember that in this route first pass effect are involved. PO is Latin abbreviation used to indicate oral route for drugs administration. Then we have advantages of oral route of drug administration. This route is convenient which means a patient can take self medication or self administration. Also this route is pain free, safe and easy. Absorption. The absorption takes place in the whole length of gastrointestinal tract and also cheap or less costly as compared to other parental drugs or injectable drugs. The disadvantages of oral routes of drugs administration include they have less bioavailability as compared to parental drugs. Only some parts of drugs are absorbed while some parts of drugs are wasted along with food particles. Other advantages is first pass effect are involved in this group. In this route, the first pass effect is the term used for hepatic metabolism. In first pass effect, the drugs will pass from fourth step ingestion through mouth to stomach. The disintegration or splitting of the drugs into in the stomach, the dissolution which mean mixing of drugs with gastric content and at last absorption from the capillaries of intestine. That's what called first pass effect. Due to first pass effect, oral route of drug administration have less bioavailability because, because of uh, food particles. It also can cause gastric irritation, nausea and vomiting because all drugs cannot tolerate acidic pH of the stomach just like insulin which lose their stability due to acidic pH because insulin are acidic acid sensitive drugs. Now here are list of some oral dosage form which most commonly administered orally to the body they include tablets, capsule, liquid, solutions, suspensions, syrups and elixirs. Then we have sublingual roots of drug administration. In this route the drug is placed under the tongue which are rapidly absorbed by capillaries. The example of this route are nitroglycerin or NGSAP which have quick action in angina pectoris. Some Antihypertensive drugs also can be used by this route, just like caputine tablets. Next, we have buccal route of drug administration, where the dosage form of drug is placed 
between gums and inner lining of cheeks and absorbed by buccal mucosa or in cheeks. Now we have the advantages and disadvantages of buccal roots of drug administration. In this route, first pass effects are not involved, also have rapid absorption and drug stability. The disadvantages of buccal roots of drug administration are inconvenience or not acceptable to patient. Also there is a chance of solvation and also small dose limit. As we know some drugs are taken as smaller tablets which are held in mouth or under the tongue. The advantage of this route include rapid absorption which means they have quick action, drug stability and first pass effect is avoided in this route that is solvation, disintegration, dissolution and absorption. The disadvantages of sub sublingual or buccal roots are this route is inconvenient, small doses and unacceptable for patient because of unpleasant taste of some drugs. Here are list of some parenteral routes of drug administration that include injectable drugs like intravenous, intramuscular, subcutaneous, intraarterial, intraarticular, intratracheal and intrathecal and intradermal and inhalation drugs like nose spray and some asthmatic drugs. Now let's see what is systemic parenteral. In this route, the drug is administered to the body through IV catheter, IV canola or needle in the form of injection or infusion. Remember that first pass effect or gastrointestinal tract are not involved in this route. Parenteral are the term that comes from Greek word in which para mean outside or beyond and intron mean the intestine. In simple word this would have bypass effect rather than first pass effect. Then comes rectal root for drugs administration. In this route the drug is administered through NS by suppository or clean enema just like dizepam, styrene, mm, theophylline and chloroprozamine, sorry chloropromazine etc. So what are the advantages of fractal root of drug administration? It is used in children, little or no first pass effect. It also used in vomiting, unconscious or uncooperative patient. The disadvantages of this route are they are inconvenient or not acceptable to patient. It is painful and have slow absorption and erratic. It can cause irritation and inflammation of the rectum or last part of the small intestine. Then comes intravenous. In this route, the drug is administered to the body through vein either by injection or infusion. This route have 100% bioavailability because first pass effect are not involved. Large quantity of drugs, infusion etc. can be used. It can be used in vomiting and diarrhea also in unconscious patient. Most commonly this route is select in case of emergency. No first pass effect, no gastric manipulation. The best advantages of intravenous roots are it can cause cellulitis and skin irritation, thrombophlebitis. As we know this route is painful, so repeated injections are not feasible always. Less safer and also export phlebotomist or trained person required. Chance of infection and not acceptable route or less convenient route because of pain. Then we have intraarterial route. In this route, the drug is administered to the artery rather than when this method is rarely used, just like anti 
cancer drugs are given for localized effect or drug used for the peripheral vascular disease and which which is the disorder that uh, change normal blood flow due to atherosclerosis or plaque then comes intraarticular and which drug administration to the joint through needles injections of antibiotics and corticosteroid are administered in inflamed joint activities by export for example hydrocortisone in rheumatoid arthritis are the examples of intraarticular then comes intramuscular route in which drug administration in muscle especially in deltoid muscles the advantages of intramuscular routes are absorption reasonably uniform rapid onset of action mild irritant can be given first pass effect avoided gastric gastric factors can be avoided the disadvantages include only up to 10 ml drugs can be given to patient local pain and abscess it is expensive chance of infection and nerve damage these all are the example uh, advantages and disadvantages of intramuscular route then comes intradermal route in which drug is given within skin layers that is dermis it is painful mainly used for testing sensitivity to drugs for example penicillin anti tetanus serum or montox test inoculation administration of vaccine like smallpox vaccine then we have topical routes of drugs administration in which drug is directly apply on the surface of skin this includes administration of drugs to any mucous membrane for example eyes nose ears lungs vagina urethra and colon topical dosage forms dose form for topical administration include creams ointment lotions gel transdermal patches disc i or ear solution suspension ointments nose and lung spray and powder etc these all are the example of topical dosage forms the advantages and disadvantages of topical route include they are local they have local therapeutic effect not well absorbed into the deeper layers of the skin or mucous membrane also lower risk a risk of side effects transdermal route offers steady level of drugs in the system spray for inhalation through the nose may be for local or systemic effects then we have route for administration time until effect intravenous have 30 to 60 seconds intraosseous 30 to 60 seconds endotracheal 2 to 3 minutes inhalation 2 to 3 minutes sublingual 3 to 5 minutes intramuscular 10 to 20 minutes subcutaneous 15 to 30 minutes rectal route 5 to 30 minutes ingestion 30 to 90 minutes transdermal or topical is variable it can be from minutes to hours i hope this makes sense thanks for watching please subscribe